Welcome back to Green is Good, and we're so excited to have on with us today Raya Salter. She's a regulatory attorney for the Environmental Defense Fund, and she focuses on U.S. climate and energy programs. Welcome to Green is Good, Raya. Good morning. Good morning, and thanks for joining us today on this another edition of Green is Good. Raya, talk a little bit about you're in a, you're a lawyer, and you're at the great you know uh, Environmental Defense Fund, wonderful, wonderful group. Talk a little bit about your journey. How did you get over there, and and why are you doing this kind of work? Well, I'm I'm happy to. Um, I'm somebody who has always cared about. Um, uh, pollution and climate change and the devastating effects it can have on our planet. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. So I'm happy to share my story and encourage folks out there to be interested in this field and potentially join this field. Oh, thank um, you. You're very welcome. Yeah, and thanks for you know, and for great young people like you to be doing this kind of important work. It inspi- further inspires me, and I'm so, that's why we have this show to, to platform all the great work the next generation is doing out there. Well, thank you so much, and it's absolutely an opportunity to be able to make these contributions, and I couldn't do it without the support and attention and caring of, of your listeners. <laughs> well, t- talk a little bit about you know the, the Environmental Defense Fund. And for our listeners out there that don't have a lot of exposure to it, please go to www.edf.org to see all the great work Raya and her colleagues are doing at, at the Environmental Defense Fund. Talk a little bit about what you know your particular specialty on U- U.S. clients climate change and energy programs. You know, when, when, in the State of the Union, President Obama referred to self-healing power grid. <laughs> what, what, what? I mean, please help me out here. Help our listeners out. <laughs> sure. You can think of a smarter grid as a two-way street between consumers and their utilities. A smarter grid also integrates clean, renewable sources of power. So if we can have a smarter grid, we can get cleaner air, which leads to better health, more reliable electricity, and greater consumer control over electric power and electricity costs. That's so interesting. You know, we've had guests on before years ago, Raya, that have talked about a lot about, you know, creating new sources of energy. But then recently, in the last year, we've had guests on that's ta- that have spoken about, wait a second, let's not make new energy we're wasting so much of our energy around the world right now. Let's make smarter, you know, smarter decisions and, 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 and actually conserve energy. Is this sort of what, where you're focused on, how to manage our energy better? That's exactly correct. Our current electricity infrastructure is aging, and it's dirty, and it's polluting, hmm. and it wastes tremendous amounts of electricity. We need a modernized, interactive energy system that is resilient enough to meet our changing energy needs, wow. one that captures efficiencies across the system um, and is open to innovation and is intelligent enough to integrate high percentages of clean energy, including electric vehicles. So what's the EDF doing? So explain the role of the Environmental Defense Fund with regards to building out and helping to reshift our paradigm to a smart green grid. Absolutely. EDF is working to put policies in place that make it easier for people to take control of their own electricity use. Folks must be able to power their own homes and businesses with clean, on-site, renewable power. This means that if the grid goes down, you have the power to create your own supply. It also means that if you are able to create your own supply when, when the grid is not down, that you can sell it back to the grid and make extra money. Um, in addition, EDF is working to enable time-of-use electricity pricing. Hmm. Now, what this means is that consumers get the power to shift their use of electricity in ways that help the environment and bring down electricity costs. This way, people who choose to run their dishwasher at night can be rewarded with lower electricity rates. Interesting. So is this stuff that, um, you know, so is this really going to change the way we live compared to how we grew up? Um, I think that that is very, very true. Um, For the first, the idea of a smart grid is really kind of revolutionary. We're Mm. used to electricity, you know, being the sort of mysterious force that, you you know, is completely done and controlled by someone else, and you flick on the switch, right. and you're able to use it. Right. Um, the truth is, is that it could be um, used in a much more flexible way. You can use your applications on your phone to control your home's electricity use Got it. Um, through a smarter meter and other technologies. 
Got it. And then, uh, you know, what what is going to get in the way of this? I mean, it sounds like something we should all be doing. We should all be doing yesterday, if, if not yesterday, now, today. Um, I've also, you know, just in my own home, I've bought one of those um, Nest thermostats right. and stuff and starting to regulate how I manage my energy in my house. So I totally see what you're doing here. And, and, I, and I encourage all of our listeners out there to follow this lead and, and, and this what the EDF is doing here with uh, Raya's, le- Raya's leadership. Talk a little bit about what's going to get in the way. Why wouldn't people do this or what would, you know, b- create a stumbling block for the EDF on this? You know, I think you really put your finger on something because one of the biggest things is just information for folks and behavioral barriers. Hmm. More people like you um, Hmm. need to um, be empowered and enabled to use their electricity in these new ways. Folks don't know about Nest thermostats. Nest thermostats (laughs) are incredible, as you you may have told your listeners before. (laughs) You can install a Nest thermostat. It can control the electricity use in your house, and it learns how you use that energy so that you can minimize it in ways that save you money but don't have negative impacts on just your regular way of life. Now, it's not our fault, however, because electricity is something that is hard to understand. Right. There are a lot of regulatory barriers that stop us from being able to understand our electricity use. For example, in California, hmm. just about everybody has a smart meter. They went ahead and spent billions of dollars to make sure folks get smart meters. However, political fights and rules that are old and outdated are preventing the power of those meters to be utilized. The meter can help you um, and help your Nest thermostat um, save you money and help the environment. But we need to fight to get those rules changed so that we can use the power that this technology is offering. That's so interesting. So, you know, one of the things we always talk about on this show is is giving people resources and windows of opportunity to step through to, to help become change uh, agents of change themselves. So, what resources can you share besides going to edf.org, which again, great website, great organization. I urge all my listeners to go learn more about the Environmental Defense Fund and all of Raya's great work with her colleagues. What other resources can you share with our listeners so they can absolutely start getting their house into this whole um, smart utility, smart grid, smart home mode. Absolutely. That's a great idea. And there's a lot of stuff that folks can do. Um, Interestingly, one of the first things that I would say is folks, go ahead and log on to your own utilities website um, Mm. in your own jurisdiction. Check them out. There are, they will have programs um, that they offer that, or they should, that can help you take advantage um, of some of these technologies. Now, here's the thing. Go to your utilities website. If they're doing a smart grid program, odds are they've got a whole tab on smart grid and what you can do to get involved. If they do not, write them a letter and ask them to, because they should be, and they should be doing more, and all utilities should be doing more. So your own utility is a place to start. There are plenty of websites that offer a lot of info and news, um, smartgrid.com, smartgrid.gov, poweroverenergy.org. So even just following some great blogs, listening to shows like like yours, keeping your finger on the button of information, I think is a great way to stay informed and be able to empower yourself. Talk a little bit about re- reliability. I mean, is, you know, reliability is something people want with, with their energy and their home and their business. Does, if, by creating smart grids now, is that going to also create more reliability in our homes and our communities and our businesses? Yes, absolutely. Explain why. We must be prepared for a world with more storms, flooding, and other weird weather. Hmm. We may not be able to to say that one particular storm is an exact um, result of climate change, but we know that climate change is real, and we know that climate change is going to bring more storms, like Superstorm Sandy, that are going to be happening more often and with more severity. And this is a tremendous threat to our lives, to our property, to our infrastructure. So we need to build a smarter grid and encourage on-site renewable energy, which will mean fewer outages and faster recovery. So one thing is distributed generation. If you've got your own power source and the grid goes down, you can um, have power and also help the grid and other people, perhaps in your neighborhood, get restarted. Um, But in addition, 
a smart grid on the utility side can have the intelligence it needs between the meters and the submeters to pinpoint outages, isolate damages, and reroute power. Hmm. So it's from, it's from the customer side in terms of having our own power. It's from the utility side in order to be able to better use power and get an outage um, fixed faster. Got it. And, and one last thing. With, you know, who is your model? You, know, you talked about California leading the way on this, but also then having some trouble. Talk about what is your leading right now, town, country, community that's doing this. You talked about Germany doing this, um, you, know, you, know, you know, right. I mean, what, who else is doing this potentially right right now? Well, there are a lot of projects out there that are trying to demonstrate and prove how powerful smart technology can be. Mm. Um, EDF works very closely with a organization, a neighborhood, that is a smart grid living laboratory. It's called the Pecan Street Project, and it's in Austin, Texas. I was oh. actually just there visiting it last week. Cool. Austin is a great town. <laughs> <laughs> the fun place in Pecan Street is a great project. So what it is is that many homes in this neighborhood in Austin have inspired, installed wireless energy and monitoring devices that enable um, the data crunchers and the tech guys to see how much electricity they're using at any given time. So we've got 200 homes that are participating. They've got solar. They've, 60 of those homes have electric vehicles. So they're using um, and living smart grid, and we're crunching that data to, um, to figure out, you know, how this can be done in other places. Gotcha. Well, any other, any other last, last thoughts you have as we wind up here, Raya? Because we want our listeners to, to really follow your lead here and do what you're saying and get involved and, and green their homes and get on the smart grid. Any last thoughts? That's, yeah, that's exactly right. We, technology is taking us to new places. Our phones are getting smarter. Our cars are getting smarter. Our appliances are getting smarter. Our homes are getting smarter. We need the electricity grid to smarten up, too. Perfect. Well, Raya Salter, you're always welcome back. Go to the web, her website. See what she's doing at edf.org. You're a great green evangelist for smart grids and green energy and truly living proof that green is good. <laughs> 